Guitar practice session 10-19-24. These are fairly sloppy practice sessions where I practice whatever I think I need to be working on, then provide you a recap so you get an idea of what you're getting into. This, of course, being that recap, hoping the practice system sessions help me generate a routine, verbalize what I'm trying to learn to get it in my mind better, possibly provide information to others, learning similar things, possibly providing for feedback. If anybody sees a better way to learn the things that I'm trying to learn, I do think trying to present what you're learning is useful because it helps us to kind of verbalize things in a way we wouldn't otherwise do. So if you want to take the resources here and make your own practice sessions, don't worry about plagiarism or whatnot. You could take the worksheets, adjust them. We'll try to provide them for you. However, they're going to be adjusted from the perspective of us from behind the guitar. If we implant the guitar on the screen, we have the low or heavy string on top, top to bottom, left to right, same orientation as us from behind the guitar. And I'm going to flip my guitar around on the screen so it looks like I'm left-handed. So once again, you'll have that same top to bottom, left to right orientation so you can view it from your perspective from playing uh, the guitar. So then uh, we're going to be looking at the seventh now in a similar way as we did yesterday when I was trying to find all of the intervals related to the three and the five. So I want to look at all of the major seven intervals as they relate to the root. Uh, and I want to do that for each string. If I could do that for each string, then I should be able to do it for basically any root note on the guitar because the relative uh, positions will be the same and that will help me to build more complex chords. So the end goal is basically what I would like to be able to do is see what, mo what uh, scale I'm in, am I in, what mode am I in, major, minor, uh, or a uh, Dorian or Phrygian and so on and so forth, then I would like to be able to have an absolute numbering system to help me relate whatever I'm playing in whatever mode I'm in to my Rosetta Stone, which is the major scale. And that will help me to determine if I make a major triad or a minor triad chord from any note in the scale, because we know that the one four, five are major chord constructions, the two, three, and six are minor, and the seven is that diminished uh, Locrian construction. Now notice that in and of itself is useful, but it's kind of like a shortcut, and it doesn't really tell us the whole story, especially when we get back to the seven, nine, uh, 11, and 13. Because for example, if I think about the the one chord construction, we play the one, three, five. If I think about the fourth, we play the one, three, five related to the first note in the chord, which is the D. And I used to think that I should pivot my mind around when I go to the four chord as though now I'm playing the one of a D major, right? If I make that the one, then I get the one, three, five, same one, same notes here. But really, uh, we could also think of it as though we're playing in the related Lydian mode. So here's the same notes in the related Lydian mode. Why is that different? Well, it's not different if I just play the one, three, five, it's the same three notes. And that's what's great about playing those triads. But when I start adding the seven, nine, 11, and 13, those will not always be the same when I'm thinking about it playing the four of a particular major chord versus making it the one of a particular major chord. And that's where things kind of get messy. So how, so my end goal is to be able to say, I would like to be able to see what, uh, what mode I'm playing in major, minor, Ionian, uh, Aeolian, Dorian, Phrygian, and so on and so forth, and relate whatever notes I'm playing in there to the relative positions in the major key, Ionian mode, so that I know when I can convert a note into a major triad or minor triad, possibly with the shortcut of saying the one, four, five, I create a major triad, the two, three, and six, I create a minor triad. But beyond that, I would like to know what the relative modes are and start to basically name the chords by mode. Because if I say, if I say I'm playing something that's in say the Mixolydian mode, if I know that, that, that that's the fifth mode relative to the major key, I know I make a major triad from it. 
but it doesn't tell me all I need to know about the 7, 9, 11, and 13. If I know it's the related Mixolydian chord that I'm going to play with a 7th in it, then I do know that that 7th is going to be the distinctive 7th. It's going to be a minor 7th instead of a major 7. So this is where it gets kind of messy because, because these 7, 9, 11, and 13 intervals, one, they don't have the same naming construction. I have to remember the 9, 11, and 13 is the same as the 2, uh, 4, and 6 of, of the, 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 the position. So I can count out my intervals. And two, they don't, they're not always the same when I think about the 1, 4, 5 major chords versus the 2, 3, and 6 minor chords. So I have to be able to say these more like exotic chords, I have to be able to say name the chord and say whether or not it fits in the scale that I'm in in order to be able to apply them. And the easiest way to do that, I think, is to actually name the chord after the mode. I'm playing the relative modal chord of Mixolydian, which has a 7 in it. That tells me it's a flat 7. I'm playing the relative Mixolydian chord, just a triad. Well, then it's just, I could also call that a major chord. It's just the fifth with the three notes, it'll be the same whether I call it a mixolydian or a, a major a major chord. That's the idea. So then I'm going to move to the seven here and just work on figuring out what the interval is for a major seven, which again would be different than the minor seven. And therefore, it'll work on the one, the Lydian mode, and it'll work on, I'm sorry, the Ionian mode, major scale, and the Lydian mode, but it will not be that seven for the mixolydian. So the one, four, but not the five related to the major keys. Okay, so then so then I'm gonna pick a a major a scale, a note to make a major scale around, and then I'm gonna find that that interval for the eleven note away major seven on each string related to it. So if I find it on each string, then I should be able to be able to go to uh, any other scale and find the relative position because the relative positions will be the same. And then I'll look for the for the same thing if, if I looked on, on the next string down. So I start at an A, and then I think we go to like this D. So I, I go down to the D major. Now, I'm working, this time I made a new worksheet that only has majors in it. So I'm not working just in the key of C major and relative modes. Now I'm, I'm working, I made a worksheet that has all major keys other than the sharps and flats so that I can always kind of pick a D major. And then if I look at that D major, I can look at the relative positions. I'm focused on the seventh related to it. And I, and, and again, if I can find the relative positions related to this D that's on the second to top string, then it'll be the same on any, any other relative position if it was the major key. If I went to an E major, uh, then I should be able to do the same relative positions here, right? So if I went to like an E major, I could scroll down and say there, there's, uh, where's it? Where, there's my E major, same relative positions, right? And then I'm good. And then I go to the next string down, and do it for for this string. I think I go to a G, so we go to the G, make it the root, and then and then find all of the the relative positions on each string, remembering that. There's only going to be one note that fits as the seventh on each string because there's only one span of notes in 12 frets. And then as I do that, I kind of toy a little bit with the idea of making a chord, meaning if I stretch up to that seventh, what else could I grab in terms of primarily the one and the three with the idea being if I'm making a four note chord, like usually the one, three, five is our baseline chord. And then I say, I'm going to add a major seven to it, right? Uh, then, then, then I would like to grab a one, three, five and a seven, but sometimes I can't grab all four notes. That's cool. I could still call it a seven. If I like drop the fifth, the first one I would drop is the fifth. If I had an option, because the fifth is not the color note, it's kind of like a filler. It doesn't give as much feeling uh, to the chord. So I would drop the fifth first. And if I can't drop, and, and if I can't do that, I would drop the third next so that I still have the root and the five and the seven. It's by the way, it's possible to drop the root and still kind of think of it as a, as like in this case, a G seven, 
cord, right? Uh, but obviously, normally, you wouldn't want to drop the root. So I think about that a little bit, but that's not where our main point of focus is. I tell a joke somewhere in there. It's pretty blase. J- j- it's, not, it's not political, really. I don't try not to get... Well, I didn't really try not to get political. I just wasn't inspired to be political at the moment. <laughs> so, so that's that. That's what we do. Today, I want to work on being able to find every major seven interval from any root point on our fretboard. Similar process to what we did yesterday when we were looking for the third and the fifth. However, the seventh is usually a little bit more confusing when we're trying to add it than when we build the chord construction and look for the intervals of the chords, which are the three and the five, because normally when we think about a chord, we think about a triad chord, which is a one, three, five, and we either think of a major triad or a minor triad, the difference between the two being the third of each triad, the third of a major being a four note away major third, the third of a minor triad being a three note away minor third. So we can still kind of think of those as the foundation, but now I want to add like a fourth note, which is the seventh. Now I'm not going to be building the whole chord this time. I just want to be able to find the, be able to find the seventh as it relates to the root. Uh, in this case, I'm looking at an A major. Note that I'm also in a different worksheet, so I'm not going to be working in the key of C and related uh, modes all the time this time. I'm just, I've put uh, all of our worksheets uh, in a major key here to have all of the notes that are not sharped and flats so that we have options just to work in uh, the major key, which is one of the problems when we move to the 7, 9, 11, and 13. And let me just kind of highlight this, why this is kind of an issue. Most of us, if we're thinking about playing like in, the, in like a major key, are going to say, here's my relative positions, 1 through 7. And if I just want to play like the major chords, then I know that I can play the one, four, five, and I will build a major triad with, with a one, uh, and then the three is going to be a major third, four note away, major third, and then the fifth. Uh, so, so, and then when I used to think about that by saying, okay, well, what if I moved down to this D? What would I, how would I envision that in my mind? I kind of used to envision it as though I'm going to another D major as though I'm shifting all the way to D major. So it's now the one chord and I'm building the one, three, five in a whole nother kind of key. You could think of it like that because then you're building, you're playing like a parallel type of, of thing. But you could also think about being in the same key and you'd, you'd be playing uh, the four would be the Lydian, right? So now I have the same exact same notes. Either way you do it, either way you think about it in your mind doesn't really matter because the one, three, five is the same. So it's kind of like one of those things like in math, like where you, where you come up with a shortcut in math and then it works, but only for like one chapter. And then you move on to the next chapter and the shortcut that you learned becomes a hindrance because it no longer works. That's why they didn't teach you to do it that way, right? Because it only works in a particular situation. Right, so that the similar kind of thing happens here where we have to say, okay, what, what is really happening uh, is that, is that I, I could, if I wanna be in the same key or in the same modal key as I'm really playing the one, three, five, in essence on the four of the related mode, which is the mixolydian, which has the same relative positions of the one, three, five, but then when I go to the seven, nine, 11, and 13, it will be distinct possibly. So. I want to keep that in my mind because what I would like to be able to do is is be able to say when I when I'm building chords on the fretboard I want to know if I'm in the same key or not so right now I'm going to be thinking about adding looking at the intervals to add the seven as though I'm playing not only the major one three five chord but I'm adding the major seven as though it's the the first it's the first chord that we would play if I, if I go to the four, I'm gonna have a similar position, but if I go to the five, the seven's gonna be a minor seven. I, I know that because of the mode. The mixolydian tells me that the, the seventh is the one that's gonna have a minor seventh in it. So I'm not gonna be able to use the same shape. So in other words, if I find the triad shape, I can use that same triad shape to play the four and the five, but I cannot use the same four note shape 
to play the five at least. I might be able to play the four. I can play the four with the same, but there's a difference in the interval. And that's usually where I think a lot of people like me got totally messed up, right? Because, because, because again, I had my shortcut and, and the shortcut didn't apply in the new chapter. <laughs> so I'm working at, so when we're learning this seven, the seven, the seven, the nine, and the, the seven, the nine, the 11, and 13, we have to know what mode we're in or what relative position uh, we're in in order to know which seven, nine, 11, 13 will fit in the key that we're playing. Uh, so just so we know that, right? So the, keeping that in mind, that's what we're gonna do. So I'm in, so now I'm in the, the A major and I'm just gonna pick something on each string. So the same concept is here in that if I choose a, a root note on each of the strings, then the relative interval to the seven will be the same no matter what note I'm on in the fretboard. So I can be anywhere on the fretboard. I just, I just need to see the relative positions for each string. Obviously, again, we have limitations when we get to the nut because I can't go past that and limitations when we go too high in the guitar. But for the most part, that's gonna be the idea. And with each string, there's only gonna be one seventh available between the frets of zero and 12 because there's, there's 12 individual notes per string. So I should be able to, just like we did on the three and the five, be able to find each of the, each of the relative positions on uh, each string, which I can then, if I was to build a chord, think about how I would build a chord based on that. All right, so let's go to the first one. I'm gonna say, let's do this one and see how this is gonna work. So now if, if A is my root and I'm in a major and I'm playing an ager, the one chord or the four chord, you can think of it, but I'm thinking of the one uh, in particular, and that's my one, then where's the seven gonna be? Well, it's, it's going to be right behind the one, right? And you, how would I know that? Because if I if I did my little math here, I'd say the distance between these two is a half step or one, and there's only 12 notes, so 12 minus one is 11. So that's going to be an 11 note away, as I could see here. Uh, let's put that here. I'm really looking at kind of this interval. Does that help to put something here? Like I'm looking at this interval. I'm looking at an 11 note away major seven. And it should be a G, it says a small G, it should be a G slash A, a G sharp, right? So so that's gonna be, so there, there it is up top. So I can't play those at the same time, but I can go boom, boom. And you get that kind of tension-y, kind of sounds like Jaws. Do, 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 do. And then I go to the next one up and I'd say, okay, what about the next one? What if I didn't know where that seven was? I could count it up by saying it's going to be five notes between each string and I have to go 11 notes up because it's an 11 note away major seven. So I'm going to go, this is five, uh, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So it'd be boom. And that's on my, my wrist is hurting a little bit today, so I might not, but that's up here. I can't quite reach it be cool if I could reach that, kind of. So you have to be, you have to hold the guitar up high to reach that one. That's why the minor seven is cool, because I can reach that one here. <laughs> but anyway, so there's that one. What about where is it on the next string? Okay, if I didn't know where that was, I can count it up and I can say, well, there's five, 10, 11, right? So five, 10, 11. <laughs> So that's uh, interesting because if I played, so now if I played, notice if I played an A bar chord, major bar chord, we might, if it was a minor seven, I could pick up my finger on the bar chord, I'd be playing this A and I'd pick up my finger to get to this G. But it's not a minor seven, it's a major seven here. So I'd have to play like that key right there, that note in order to get it. So, so that's, it's different. I, ha I have to realize it's different than the minor, than if I played the diminished seven or the minor seven. Let's just hear the difference if I played like this versus the normal major versus the minor seven. 
All right, anyway. All right, let's find the next one. Where's the next one? It's on this string. If I, oh no. They changed the way this thing looks on Excel, I swear. So it'd be five, 10, 15. So I'm gonna say 15 minus 12 to get it down to something under 12 notes is gonna be five minus, well, no. Let's say five, 10, 15. I gotta get down to 11, 14, 13, uh, 12, 11. All right, so that would be back like in the one on the G. That's pretty much just a big reach. Doable, but reachy. Not too much else I can do with that. If I, ha if I, I could, I could grab my major third right there. So that's doable, really. Especially on the higher register. I'm muting the open D. And I'm picking up that C right there. I'm picking up this C. Could I pick something up with this finger? I would need to pick up like the E. That's not doable. Oh, that's hard. That's rough. It's doable though. All right, anyways. So now we're gonna say, I just need some practice with it. Now if there, it's gonna be five, 10, 15, and then I'm gonna bring it back down. 15 minus 12 would be five minus two or three, plus five, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, right? That's how I could count up to that one. That would be the nine. Uh, that's also reachy. So is there anything else I can grab the fifth with that? Could I get a fifth with that? And then I could grab this one, be another root. That'd be tough. Uh, I'm not gonna do that. My hand hurts. My wrist is hurting. I've got a little bit of gout in my wrist. I can feel it. It's not gout. You just have a mess. It's gout, dude. I'm telling you. You don't have gout. You're not heavy enough to have gout. I tell you, don't tell me what I have. I've been I know what I'm talking about. Try to tell me I'm okay. So there they are. There. Let's try the next string down. And so let's pick like this D maybe. So let's see if I can find, so I made one, now I'm in D major. So we're not, we're looking at D major now. There's my, uh, there's my D, okay. So then if I go to the string above it, where's my 11 note away major seven? It's over here, how would I know that? Well, I'd have to say the inverse, oh, wait a sec, yeah, the inverse, uh, It'd be, a, it'd be 11 note away. So 12 minus 11 is one, is one note away. And if I count, so, so I should have one note between these two strings. If I count it, it would be what I would call negative five because I'm going up now. And then going to the right would be four, three, two, one. So pinky to pointer. So if I looked at this shape, then this would be uh, D to the, to the nine from here to here. Pinky to pointer would be a one note away. It's pinky to pointer, but five fret pinky to pointer would be a one note away uh, minor second. And therefore from D up would be a 11 note away major seven. Makes perfect sense. All right, and then there's one right on the same string behind it. That makes sense because same rationale it would be, I'm looking for the, if it's behind it, I'm looking for a one note away. So from C sharp to D, one note away, minor second. Therefore from D to C sharp is a 11 note away, major seven. Makes sense. All right, if I go below it, it's gonna be five, 
10, 11. So five, the, 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 mi the minor seven would be here, major seven, therefore out here. One way to find it, this is often to find the, the relative major. So the relative major is this shape, D to D. And then of course it's right behind the D. You get that tensiony sound leading. Gonna, there it is there all right next one is going to be back here once again 5 10 and then this would be 15 14 13 12 11 so it's on the second that's again reachy but doable now then I can always grab my third here right there so that's kind of interesting because that shape is interesting because I could grab, I could go do it, do it and grab my fifth, which would be the A. Or I can bar the fifth and try to get that seventh in there. Or I can let that fifth go entirely and just mute it with the palm, with the tip of my finger. get rid of the fifth and get the seventh. So that's kind of a useful one. I can even get that another third on top with a little bar. I'd like to be able to mute that top string so I can go crazy picking. I'm kind of thinking that's useful and then I can go up here which would be the same as the nine so nine so if I did that wait I'm on the D I could say there's my fifth Then seven. But doable. All right, let's try the next one. Uh, let's go down to like that G. Let's find my G. I did a G major down here. So I'm on G major. So we're on this one. Ba Boom. And so then I'm gonna say okay. Uh, so if I'm on this G, now I'm in, I'm on G major now. So G major, these are not relative, these are not relative modes like I've been messing with before. And so I'm on this seven, let's put thing down here, which is going to be that G sharp or flat, F sharp, G flat. So, so now we're going to say, where is the one above it? So same relative position, we're going to say, oh crap, oh crap, it's going to be uh, up here, so that makes sense, because it needs to be, it's got to be an 11 note away, 12 minus 11 is 1, so I'm looking for the, for the thing on this, the note on the, the thing, on this string where it's a 1 note away to get down to here. And I can count that out from here by saying this would be what I would say negative 5 going to the right would go down 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. So boom, boom on the 9. That's a one note away uh, minor second and therefore from G back up 11 note away major 7. So now I'm talking a boot. Talking boot, talking boot. And then up here, we're going to say, how can I get there? Well, I'm looking for a one note away. So I'd say negative 5, negative 10, 9, 8. What, what am I doing here? How did that work? What que paso? Uh, that needs to be, let me try that again. It's negative 5, negative 10, and then 11, 12, 13. 13 minus 12 is 1. That's how to do it. 
So I had to pause there for a second. My brain's a little slow right now. It's okay. I'm not stupid. It's just slow at the moment. I got... And then. So if I go from top to bottom, one note away, minor second from bottom to top, 11 note away, major seven. Okay. All right, let's go then on the same string. It's going to be right behind it because... It's a one note away uh, minor second going from the F sharp to the G and therefore going backwards from G to F sharp. It's an 11 note away major seven. Okay, and then I can go to the next string. It's gonna be, if I count that up, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. 10, 11. So I gotta, I gotta reach all the way up to the 11, which isn't happening. Uh, that would be too far. Well, maybe I can do that. Ugh. Wait a second, I'm down here. Yeah, that's that stretchy one. The minor's doable, but the major, not really doable. But there it is anyways. And then we go to the next one down. It's going to be five, and then across the, this would be ten here, and then eleven, because we crossed. Other way I would do it is find the related major, and then back one on that one. That's, so okay, that one's doable because usually I play the D-shaped chord like this. So I can just bar that off, of course. Or I can play just the bottom two, or just the top two. could always and I can also bar this side off anyway we'll keep that and then the next one down is back here again on the 10 so back down to on the two man so so there's my third and then the fifth would be right here that's interesting because that's that shape so <laughs> It looks like it should be easy to play. It's kind of hard to play that, actually. But that's going to be one, two, one, three, five, seven. Cool. be doable. I'll have to put that into my repertoire. All right, let's do the next one. We go, let's do uh, the C. Let's do the C. Where's that? I did a C. Uh, C is up here. There we go. Okay, so now let's say we're in the C major now. And we're looking, but I'm looking at this C. So this is the one we're most used to, or I am. And then let's paste that. I'm still looking at this seven now, which is a B. The relative position should be the same. So I'm like, okay, if there's my, what, let's go above it first. So above it, I have my seven out. Uh, what, what, what? So it'd be five, negative five, four, three, two, one. Once again, because it's it's a one note away, it's 11 note away, 12 minus 11 is one. So this would be like this here. So from top to bottom, it's a one note away, minor second from bottom to top, seven note away, major 11. All right, so that's doable. What can I do with that, by the way? The fifth, 
is above it. I have an, a third right here. So I have that third, I could play it like this. And that way I get a one, I get the one, I get the three and a, and a seven, dropping the five. Interesting. Is that right? I think it is. Okay. So let's go to the one above that, which is going to be 5, 10, 9, 8, 7. So that's going to be going back to here. That's doable on the two. <laughs> What can I do with that? There's a third right under it, so I can bar that. So that's totally doable. So I can go boom, boom, and then that. I could also put the F, which would be the 11. potential and then we'll go up here p for possibilities <laughs> 5 5 10 15 15 minus 12 is 5 minus 2 3 and then 2 1 so that's one note away so if i go up here to that one that's a one note away, May minor second, and bottom to top, seven note away, major 11. So if I did this, I have a three right underneath it here, and I've got a five right here. That's interesting. So if I played it like that, like if I picked up this three, and then this G, I would probably, in my mind, be thinking of it as an E minor shape with an added note in it. But now, I'm see, this is where it gets all messy with these four note shapes, right? I can think of it here. But anyway, I don't want to get too in the weeds with that. I'm just finding the note right now. And then on the same string, it's right behind it of course because that would be a one note away from b to c one note away minor second therefore from c to b 11 note away major seven and then below it it's going to be that really big stretch so it'd be five to here six seven eight nine ten eleven that's even further because of the kink in the tuning so that's totally not doable it's like no way man not happening but I could go back because of the kink in the tuning to here. So to a B, that could possibly be doable if I wasn't, it's an open string, oh, it's at the nut. And then here it would be five, 10. It would be five, 10, 11, right? So it would be here going down. It would be right there at the seven. Interesting because normally the this, this shape I would be playing from this C would be this shape, an A shape. And then I can add the 7, which means I drop. Now, wait a second. Normally the shape would be G, C, E, and then I can add the 7 on top which is a little bit more tensiony, or I can add another root with a C. So that'd be kind of interesting. I can lead into the root. Okay, cool. Uh, let's do the next one down. 
Oh, let's do an E. So that E right there. Where's an E major? So now I'm in E major, looking at this E. All right, let me do a joke before I go too far here. About the half, well, I'm, not, I'm probably not even gonna go an hour today. A little out of it. <clears throat> it's not the greatest joke either, but whatever. I'm slacking off today, I got. All right. You know, people keep saying that I want to have my cake and eat it too. I want to have my cake and eat it too. And it's like, of course, I want to eat my cake. What, why else would I buy it? That's what I always think when someone says that, you know. Why would I buy the cake? What, 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 am, I, what am I supposed to do? Just sit, just sit and watch my cake turn into like a moldy pile of slime? I mean... You know, I see it more of a timeline rather than just an either or thing with the having the cake and the eating the cake, right? It's more of a process that we go through with this whole cake thing. Step one, I buy a cake. I would make a cake, but I have no talent. So I buy a cake, converted it from the store's cake to my cake through the system of voluntary exchange. It's called capitalism. And then step two, once in, in, in a comfortable location, I then eat my cake. I eat my cake. And then step three, w when I get hungry again, I go out and I buy another cake. And then the process, it repeats thusly. So, so, so is that so bad? Is that so bad? You know, what's the problem with having my cake and eating it too? It's ridiculous. It's not like you, you, there's... You have to insert time into the equation. Like there's, you, you have the cake at a certain point and then you eat the cake and you don't have it anymore, right? Everything has to be in its proper location in time. You can't be serious. You can't be serious, man. You know, I'm, I am serious. I'm, I'm, serious I'm as serious as a dust dry, sharp pointy booger threatening to threatening at the slightest touch to give you a bloody nose while you're wearing a like a white tuxedo in the middle of like a wedding ceremony or something it's like wow that's that's some serious stuff that's right that's right i'm serious i'm not just i'm not just as serious as a heart attack i'm as serious as like 3,000 legions of hearts equipped with swords and spears lined up in an aggressive phalanx, phalanx while ready, you know, attacking while you're helplessly tied up to a pole. That's how serious I am, not just a heart attack. 3,000 leagues, le legends of hearts attacking with spears while you're tied up on a pole. That's some serious business, man. All right, let's continue on here. <clears throat> We're on the E now. So the E is going to be here. So if we go above it, I'm going to say, okay. Then if I count this up, now we've crossed the, the fault line. So now when I go up now and count up, I have to go, this is going to be five. No, this is going to be five out here. Negative five, four, three, two, one. So that's going to be on the 8th. So that's going to be here. Is that right? Yeah, I think that's right. So yeah, that would be a one note away. So that's going to give me my one note away uh, minor second. And therefore from E up, 11 note away major 7. That's right, because here's the E again. Alright, so, and what could I do with that? Well, there's a third back here, so I could almost reach that third, but not really. Uh, there's a, there's not a whole lot I can, there's a, can't really reach behind that, that's ridiculous. There's a fifth here, I can get the fifth, so I could go... kind of pretty. Give 
gives you an almost like floaty kind of feeling. Might have to put that in there. Okay, I can see where that could come into play. What can I do with this finger? Uh, I have an extra finger up here. Put that here, maybe. That would be picking up the 13. It's gonna give it even more tension. What if I got rid of the root? <laughs> like, uh... all right, enough pondering that. Uh, did I go above it? I can't remember. Oh, yeah, I am above it. Man, I'm a mess today. Okay, let's go back here. So if I go this way, I'm, I'm going, okay, this is negative 5, uh, 10, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. 13 minus 12 is 1. Okay. So if I go here, and then I go back to this one. Does that make sense? Yeah, because here's the E. So not a whole lot I can do with that. It's quite reachy, in part because of the kink and the tuning. I've got a finger out here I could do something with, but not too much I can grab on that one. I could grab this B. There's my third. That's an interesting, stretchy way to play the one three seven. Might be able to do that if I trained myself to be able to stretch that one out to throw that in the mix. No one's seen, probably don't see that one every day. We're gonna say this will be five, ten, fifteen, uh, fifteen, fourteen, thirteen, thirteen minus twelve is one. Okay, so I could say that it's gonna be up here. So here's, again, here's my E. Here's my E. So it's back here. That makes sense. One, there's a one note away. Minor second, so bottom to top. 11 note away, major seven. And then I should be able to find, I should have the three is actually right underneath it. So that's interesting. And then I've got this string right here, this B string, or is that a G string I could ring out? Or I can mute it. It's not in the key, so I should be muting it. Harder to mute than I would think. Or I could play, or I can grab it like this, maybe. And then if I grabbed it, I'd be also picking up the 13. It's an interesting. Try it with a bar chord. That puts the A on the bottom, too. All right. Muy interessante. Like an elefante. I'm a rhymer, even in Espanol. It's easy to rhyme in Espanol. Whatever, dude. Everything ends in an O or an A for crying. Okay. Don't be stepping on my rhyming ability. Okay, I can't reach that. Let's go to the one behind it. So that one, clearly. And then this one's the stretchy one, which isn't messed up because of the kink and the tuning, because it's up here, not between these two. 
So it's almost reachable. It's, it's like Indiana Jones reaching for the for the Holy Grail. It's like right there, but almost just out of reach. I can get it. I can get it. I can do it. But just let it go. Let it go. No, totally. I got it. See? If you're on that high register. All right. Let's go to the next one. Let's go to the A. And so we're on the A at the bottom this time. Esta vez. Ahora mismo. And if we go to the one above it, there's no kink in the tuning between these two. So it's going to be... Oh, no, I dropped my pick. Dang it. I need to pick up my pick. So this is going to be five. Oh, what in the world happened there? This is going to be five, four, three, two, one. Makes sense. To the nine. Because the next A would be right there. Boom. That's a one note away, minor second, bottom to top, 11 note away, major seven. Mui B to the N, B end, my friend. It's B end, my friend. All right, but then we're gonna go, see now I'm rhyming with English and Spanish. That's cheating too. You can't just, you can't just pick words from different languages to rhyme. Whatever, dude. I can rhyme with, words in another language i'm gonna say oh that makes now wait a second yeah because here's the a behind it it's kind of tensiony sounding i could get i could grab something else with that it's kind of hard because it's a stretch because of the kink and the tuning i'm above the kink and the tuning not much else I can do with that. We'll leave it there. Next one would be, it's gonna be, once again, 5, 10, 15, 14, 13. So if I go from here, the next A is right there. So then, so then I'm going here for the, for the seventh, so here to here. That's going to be a one note away, minor second, bottom to top, 11 note away, major seven. So here I've got a lot of opportunities because right underneath it, I've got, that's where I have my third. And then I could bar this one off. Or play it like this. Which is interesting because again I would see that normally as like an E or I would see that as a, a C sharp shape okay let's not boggle the brain too much your mind is not as sharp as a tack he's as sharp as a tack people just like Joe Biden is sharp his mind is sharp as a tack today I tell you every media Commentator has repeated the same line. He's as sharp as a tack. Sharp as a tack. Sharp as a tack. Didn't you get the memo? He's sharp as a tack. Okay. Anyways, that's it. I think I'm pretty much done here. Okay. messing with this rhythm. What was I doing?
Well, I doubt.